answering some of those questions with yeah. Steve Rogers, our expert this hour, former military intelligence officer, FBI National and Joint Terror Task Force veteran as well. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Uh, and Good morning. I wonder when you hear what Pete just said, important questions because of the arc of this. Uh, I covered Barack Obama when he was saying that ISIS was allegedly the JV team. Uh, that was widely panned. When President Trump takes office, uh, ISIS has this caliphate and has uh, control, uh, as Pete was referring to, about the size of Ohio. Now they're basically hiding in caves. Uh, and gasping for breath. Talk about the arc of, of ISIS and what President Trump has done. Well, you use the word hiding. I remember some time ago, President Trump said in reference to Baghdadi, he could run, but he can't hide. And the president had provided U.S. intelligence agencies with the equipment and the resources that they needed to capture him or kill him. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, he did the job. The president made a promise and he did the job. Now, keep in mind that uh, U.S. intelligence will not release how they got the information. Uh, that's very important. Uh, you have human intelligence on the ground, Pete, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they have electronic uh, intelligence uh, sources. But the fact of the matter is, and the irony of all this is, the president was being criticized for taking forces out of Syria, but he knew what we didn't know. The president knew that U.S. intelligence was working with the Kurds to get this guy. And he and authorized this operation we're well, talking he days ago. Yes, days While ago. everybody was pounding him, he knew in private that something big may be coming. He certainly did, and that's what's important. Uh, and to the point of, of, of what you said, uh, this is big. This is big because it destroys the morale of, uh, the, uh, uh, of ISIS. It destroys the morale of all our enemies. You can, as the president said, you can run, but you can't hide from the United States. In terms of, obviously, we're going to hear from the president at 9 a.m. We're going to hear a, a more information about how this takedown actually happened. But in terms of the larger picture, what do you expect to hear from the president with respect to overall strategy in Syria? itself. Well, I believe what we're going to hear is that he continues to work hard with our allies, uh, contrary to what everyone else is saying, to gather intelligence and, and information. A lot of what we're seeing now are special operations where U.S. forces are no longer in harm's way. Let's make it clear that there were no U.S. losses or even what we have uh, heard uh, as of late, no injuries at all. So it was a clean operation. I believe we're also going to hear that the United States did receive a lot of intelligence on the ground when they conducted this raid. So there's probably more to come, uh, and he may just release some of that information at 9 o'clock. Steve, we hadn't heard much about al-Baghdadi, a, a tape here, an audio recording here. But a re initial reports are that he had been, he'd changed what he was doing. He was wearing regular civilian clothes, he was traveling in regular cars, no one around him could have a cell phone, obviously they didn't want to be tracked. But w what has changed, what changed in the reality in your sense, viewing it from what we know openly, uh, that, 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 that changed the game so that we were able to target someone like al-Baghdadi, who, who could have been hiding in one place for a long time, we don't know. I believe one game changer was the president uh, stating that he was withdrawing troops from Syria. I mean, this let this guy's guard down. And you're right. He was out dressed just like a normal person out in the area that he was hiding in. And so, you know what? They, they probably believe, well, the U.S. is on the run. They're getting out of here. They're not paying attention. Boy, did he get a surprise because the president was paying attention. And the last time the president made major remarks on this, at least like a, kind of a formal speech, he's made other little comments with reporters. Several days ago at the White House, what I recall is the president saying that this is a durable ceasefire, that the ceasefire is going to hold on the ground. He, he was putting a, a positive uh, foot forward, if you will. And there was one pundit after another saying this is his mission accomplished moment, mm -hmm. meaning it's going to blow up in his face because bad things may happen. They said all this negativity in the media about what might go wrong, we wake up this morning and find out what went right. You know, and as a former U.S. Uh, Navy intelligence officer, I see these people and these pundits and even former intelligence officers and I'll tell you what, they've politicized this process uh, so badly. They hate President Trump so badly. They're not really looking out for the interests of this country. Thank God he's focused on keeping his promises and defending us, and he did through this operation. You're saying that al-Baghdadi could have potentially let his guard down in response to the president uh, calling for that troop withdrawal in the location in Syria where he did. Do you think that was strategic on the part of the administration to do that, to well, announce that, yeah, in order I, to achieve that effect? Yeah, I, you know, I think a lot of people under Underestimate uh, the president's uh, tactics and his strategy, but he certainly did something that was unexpected. 
getting out of Syria, or at least announcing it, but did we really get out? There was uh, probably a redeployment of some of those commando troops, mm -hmm. and I believe, yes, to, to answer your question directly, yes, I believe the president had this information, probably working with his uh, military uh, strategists, this was a good uh, way to get this guy exposed. Steve, the president's taken a lot of criticism for his policy in the region, but if you step back, now al-Baghdadi, presumably dead, we'll find out more details about that, the physical caliphate destroyed, you've got a situation there where U.S. presence is basically standing between multiple forces that want uh, control of that ground where we have poured precious lives and money in for a long time. It, as you step back, what is, the, what, what is the criticism? Well, it's all politics, Pete. It's all politics. I mean, I've seen nothing but a pounding of this president for doing his job. And uh, 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 when you ask for specifics, there are no specifics. What are they going to say when they wake up today? What on earth are they going to say when they wake up today after they pounded this man week after week about his strategy regarding the Mideast? All they could say is, well, you know what? Here we go again. Uh, he wins. We lose. Mm -hmm. Important so, to note also that a lot of that pounding came from within the Republican Party, not just from Democrats. Well, yes, it did. And, and unfortunately, uh, well, let's put it this way. Fortunately, the president wins again. He's looked out for the American people. He has fulfilled his promise. Has anybody checked? on Mitt Romney this morning. We'll be watching, <laughs> we'll be watching his Twitter feed very closely. Wait, 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 which one? Yeah. Yeah. Pierre Delecto? Uh, or, uh, that's a whole other story. Uh, All right. Steve Rogers, Thanks, appreciate Mike. your Appreciate it. We're going to turn to some headlines for you now, beginning with a Fox News alert. Right now, police...